hi hello and welcome back to my channel my name is Alex and today we're going to talk about some of the most interesting books I've ever read part two so a little while back I posted a video about some of the most interesting books I've ever read and I did three titles in that video and so I'll do three titles today these are books that I think about all the time no matter how long ago I've read them or even if I didn't like them so much I think about them a lot. Either they had really interesting characters or just a really interesting premise. I'm saying interesting a lot. Basically they're books that live rent free in my head. And they're books that when people say they want to read something different, these are the books I think about. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The first book I'm going to talk about today is Meddling Kids by Edgar Quintero. Okay, first of all, look at this cover, right? Look at this cover. I mean, I love it, okay? I came across this book, I think it was probably on Pinterest. I found someone's blog that said, uh, do you like Stranger Things? Um, read this book if you like Stranger Things. So I opened the blog post and there was like a whole list of books and this book caught my eye and so I added it to my list to read. This was probably a couple years ago um, that I read it. So has all the vibes okay so just think scooby-doo for adults with lots of gore lots of good representation and just this real knife edge horror to it I mean it's so good it's so good each of the characters like they tell the story of like what they actually had like a Scooby-Doo style gang and there's lots of like little throwbacks to Scooby-Doo in here like they live in Zoinks Valley. That's hilarious. Okay and the main characters all have their own issues like yes when they were like getting the gang together back in the day in like the 90s or whatever they were young and in high school and so it takes the gang and they grow up and they've all separated and gone their different ways and they've all encountered their own issues, mental issues, physical issues, things like that along the way. And now they're getting back together to save their hometown. And just the feel of this book is so nostalgic. The plot line of this book was actually really good. The horror writing was very good. I was so surprised. I was really thinking they might try to like skirt it a little bit and not get into it, but they get into it. And there's just some really great moments in this book. So if you like Scooby-Doo, Stranger Things, it really did give the Stranger Things vibes. And there was really good representation. The writing style was so unique and I just fell in love with it. Uh, I'm gonna have to read this book again. Now that I'm talking about it, I want to read it again. Just check it out. If you like any of those boxes, any of those topics that I mentioned, check this one out. It, I'll never stop talking about this book. I'll never stop thinking about it. This is a perfect one for most interesting books because, wow, I'll never read anything quite like it again. I'm sure I won't. Let's get into another one. The next book is Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. And I've talked about Stuart Turton before. Stuart Turton's back, okay. This book, the premise of this book was so interesting. Okay, so basically we have Bishop who wakes up in the forest and he's on a mission to discover who killed Evelyn Hardcastle, okay. And he gets one day and then he goes to sleep and he wakes up and he's back in the exact same moment as he was the day before, but he's in a different body. So it's like a game of Clue, but you get to be all the pieces. It's twisty. It's weird. It's thrilling. The mystery plot is really good. And Bishop has to, throughout the book, he kind of decides like, maybe I should try and escape whatever hell I'm in. And then he figures out that he can't really do that. And so the whole point of the book is for Bishop to figure out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle. 
and for him to escape the situation that he's in. And there's lots of side characters and there's lots of different things happening. There's like multiple plot lines all at once. Like I did have one of my friends tell me she's like, she made a post-it note system to try and keep everything straight. I really enjoyed this book. I thought the idea of it was so unique, so interesting. I do know that a lot of people have had issues with this book. Um, so look up like the trigger warnings for this book, or if you have favorite influencers or something that are talking about this book, um, you know, I would honestly say just like listen to what they have to say and make your decisions for there. But for me, I found the premise of this book completely engrossing. Like I just hung on for the ride. I thought it was this super cool idea and that Stuart Turton really delivered. With all of Stuart Turton's books, they're thick. So if you're going to read it, carve out a minute to read it because it's a, it's a journey for sure. And the ending, I didn't see that coming a mile off. So it was good. I'll never forget this book. Okay, the last book I'm going to talk about today is How to Live a Life of Crime by Kirsten Miller. I honestly don't know how I came across this book. Maybe I just kind of like saw it and thought it looked interesting and it was interesting. So basically the whole premise of this book is that these kids, young adults, get sent to a very selective private school to be taught how to be professional criminals. So the kids that they're picking up to go into the school are like pickpockets, thieves, sex workers, things like that. Kids are young, younger adults that are like already on the path to a criminal life. Maybe they don't have people that are taking care of them or care about them. They don't have any family. They're very disconnected and they get selected to go to this very elite school where they teach them to be professional criminals. So think like, you know, <clears throat> billionaires, stock market brokers, things like that, where it's, you know, shady, but legal and you can make a lot of money ripping a lot of people off. That's what they're teaching them to do. Like big gun criminals that don't ever get caught. That's what they're teaching them to do. But you graduate, you get to leave. You don't graduate, you disappear. So it's very twisty, very dark, very violent. This is a very violent book, I would say, considering the characters are on the younger side, a very violent book. So I, I would be careful about that, you know, but I don't really remember a whole lot about this book. I just remember thinking, wow, that was cool. So yeah, this is also one of those ones that lives rent free in my head, like just a super cool premise. Um, there is a little bit of a love interest in there, I think. It's just, this is what I mean when I say books that live rent free or writers that write books that you'll never forget about. This is one of them because honestly, I don't remember a ton about this book, but if you, if I ever see someone reading this or I hear someone talking about Kirsten Miller, I'm like, yeah, this book, this book, like it will stay with me forever. I mean, I think I, re I read it like seven years ago. That's a long time, like considering, especially if you're like a big reader and you read like, you know, eight books a month, like that's a lot of books ago. Still remember it. Hard to forget. So yeah, check that one out. So yeah, I said I'd only do three titles and I only did three titles. Okay. I just wanted to keep it short for you guys. Um, this is part two. There will be a part three. I've already, I've still got a list that I'm working with of most interesting books I've read. So yeah, there will be a part three. Just wanted to keep this one quick and casual today. I love talking about like interesting books. So if there are books that you've read that you're like, wow, this book was really cool, really different. 
drop me a title in the comment section. Maybe I've read it too. Maybe I want to read it. I'll probably want to read it. So yeah, just let me know. Uh, make sure you click all the buttons for me so you know when I'm posting. I post every week, so I will be back next week with a very exciting video. I'm really excited. Been working on it for a while, the idea of it. So yeah, I'm really excited for next week's video. I'm excited for every week's video. So if you want to hear about book recommendations, book reviews, my random list that I put together, my maybe series where I talk about some of the books I might read in upcoming months, Hit the subscribe button, follow me, watch for more videos. I'm here. Until next time, bye.